The Absolute at Large by Karel Chopik Translated by David Wiley Performed by Francis Bass Chapter 12 The Private Tutor The learned young Dr. Blahos, just 55 years old and already private tutor in comparative religion at Charles University in Prague, wrung his hands as he sat down to the quartos of paper ready cut and waiting for him. He quickly wrote the title, Manifestations of Religion in Recent Days, and began his article with the words, The meaning of the term religion has been disputed at least since the time of Cicero, but then stopped to think. I'll have this article published, and then my colleagues just see what a sensation it'll cause. I'm lucky that this religion fever is broken out just at the right time. My article will be right up to date. All the papers will say, Our learned young Dr. Blahosh has written a study which is highly penetrating, and lots of comments like that. Then I'll be given an exceptional professorship, and Regner will burst with rage. Here the young scholar rubbed his wrinkly hands till they cracked with joy and sat down to the job of writing. By evening, when his landlady came to ask what he would like for dinner, he was already on his sixtieth quarto of paper and writing on the subject of the church fathers. By eleven o'clock, page 115, he had arrived at his own definition of the term religion, in which just one word was different from the definition set down by his predecessor. He briefly discussed, with several cutting remarks, the exact methods of religious science, and by then the brief introduction to his article was completed. Shortly after midnight, our scholar wrote, it is in very recent times that a number of religious and cult phenomena have manifested that require the attention of the exact science of religion. To be sure, their primary function is the study of religion and nations long defunct, but the living present can also offer the modern, Dr. Blahosh underlined this word, researcher various data which, mutatis mutandis, throw a certain light on the cults of the ancient world about which we can offer naught but surmisals. He went on to describe Kazendism, according to newspaper and eyewitness reports, in which he found traces of fetishism and even totemism, the dredger being the totemic god of Stikovitsa. He asserted that followers of the Bender cult showed similarities with the whirling dervishes and ancient orgiastic cults. The events at the grand opening of the power station were quickly placed in context and compared with the Parsi fire worshippers. Makat's religious community, he said, showed traces of asceticism and fakirism. He cited various incidents of clairvoyance and miracle healing, which he compared very favorably with the magic performed by ancient Negro tribes in Central Africa. He mentioned the extent of psychic phenomena and remote suggestion. He cited the historical occurrence of parades of flagellants, the Crusades, millenarianism, and the Amoks of Malaysia. He explained the religious movements of recent days from two psychological points of view. From the pathological point of view as degenerate hysterics, and from the point of view there was a collective psychological epidemic of believers, the mass of people of less intellectual ability. In both explanations he demonstrated the atavistic appearance of primitive cult form, their tendency to animism, pantheism, and shamanism, religious communism reminiscent of neo-baptism, and, in general, the weakening of reasonable thoughts and activities in favor of the crudest drives and superstitions, magic, occultism, mysticism, and idolatry. We are now faced with the task, Dr. Blahosh continued, of determining how far we are dealing with charlatans and cheats speculating on human credulity, as there is no doubt that any scientific examination would show that the supposed miracles of these present-day thaumaturgs are nothing more than attempts at the deceits and suggestions that have long been familiar. This aspect of the new religious communities, sects and circles that spring up every day, is more the concern of the security forces in psychiatry than ourselves. The study of religion is an exact science and limited to ascertaining that all these religious manifestations are basically no more than barbaric atavism and mumbo-jumbo dating back to the most primitive elements of cults that arise from the fantasies that live in the human unconscious, it requires no more than a few fanatics, charlatans, and downright maniacs to bring out the prehistoric motives for religious faith that live beneath the veneer of European civilization. Dr. Blahosh got up from his desk after writing the 346th quarto of his article, although he was still not tired. I need to work out an effective conclusion, he said to himself. A few thoughts about progress in science, about the rather suspect toleration toward this religious obscuritanism showed by government, about the need to establish a vigorous defense against reaction, and so on. Here the young scholar, lifted on the wings of his own enthusiasm, went over to the window and leant out into the quiet of the night. It was half-past four in the morning. 
Dr. Blahosh looked down into the dark streets and shivered slightly in the chilly air. Around him all was dead. Not a single tiny light shone from anyone's window. A private tutor raised his eyes to the sky. It had already begun to turn pale, but the stars still sparkled in its boundless glory. He realized how long it had been since he had looked at the sky. Good Lord, it must be nearly thirty years! A cool and pleasant breeze stroked his brow, as if someone had taken his head into a pair of cold, clean hands. I'm so alone, the old man thought with regret. Always so alone. Yes, stroke my hair a little. Oh, it's thirty years since anyone put their hand on my brow. Anxious and a quiver, Dr. Blahos stood at the window. Something's here, he suddenly felt with sweet and fearful startlement. Oh, God, I'm not here alone after all. There's an arm that's holding me. Someone is here beside me. Don't go. If the doctor's housekeeper had come into the room a few moments later, she would have seen him standing at the window with both hands raised up high, his head thrown back, and, on his face, an expression of the greatest rapture. But now he shook himself, opened his eyes, and, as if in a dream, went back to his desk. On the other hand, however, there can be no doubt, he wrote quickly and with no thought of what he had written earlier, that it is only by means of these primitive cults that God can manifest in the modern world. With the decline of faith in recent times, the connection with the spiritual life of the ancients has been broken. God needs to start again from the beginning, bringing us back to him as at one time he did with the savages. He must start with the idols and fetishes, minor deities, groups, clans, and tribes, bring nature to life and work through witchcraft. This historical development of religion is repeating itself before our eyes, starting with the prehistoric forms and gradually progressing to higher levels. The modern wave of religiosity is quite likely to branch out in many different directions, each of which will strive to become dominant at the expense of the others. We can expect a period of religious wars which, in their fervor and persistence, will surpass the Crusades and, in their size, will surpass the recent world wars. In this godless world of ours, the kingdom of God will not come without great sacrifices and dogmatic confusion. This is why I tell you, give yourselves over to the absolute with all your being. Believe in God so that he can speak to you in any way possible. Know that he is already on his way to make the earth, and perhaps other planets in our solar system too, part of his eternal empire, the empire of the absolute. Again, I tell you, repent before it's too late. This article by Dr. Blahosh, the private tutor, really was published, although some cuts were made. The editors printed only part of his analysis of new sects, but the whole of his conclusion, and they did take the precaution of adding a note saying that this young academic's views are certainly an indication of the mood of the age. There was no scandal when it was published because, as it turned out, it was suppressed in another way. Dr. Regner, private tutor of philosophy, however, did read it, upon which he announced in various places... Blahosh is impossible, simply impossible. How can you possibly take someone seriously who dares to write academic articles about religion when he believes in God himself? This recording is under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike License. Music was composed by John Philip Sousa and performed by the United States Marine Band. The book was written by Karel Chopek, translated by David Wiley, and performed by Francis Bass.